In this video, we're going to talk about one of the ideas that is really fundamental to information retrieval, and that is the idea of indexing data. And so we're going to spend some time here in the sketchpad just to take a look at some of the overall patterns, and then we'll move into a Jupyter notebook to actually implement some of these data structures. So in the previous video, we talked about the fact that when we're dealing with small amounts of data, we can typically just use regular expressions to linearly scan through that data to extract the information that we're looking for. But when we're talking about sig more significant amounts of data, we really need to do some indexing, some pre-processing of that data beforehand so that we can efficiently query it. And the first type of index that we'll be talking about is, uh, or uses a, f a form called a term document matrix or term document incidence matrix in this case. And this is a data structure that is going to allow us to do a specific type of querying against our data, which uses something called the Boolean retrieval model. So there's a lot of fancy terms here when it comes to indexing, but Boolean retrieval is really just the simple idea that we combine terms with Boolean operators. So think terms plus and, or, and not. So if we want to be able to search our documents using a form like baseball and basketball or Sally and James, then we're going to be supporting a Boolean retrieval model for those types of queries. And one of the ways that we can support Boolean retrieval model search is by building a term document incidence matrix. So let's look at a simple example. So let's say that we have a handful of documents. We'll have three documents. The first one will just be Jackie lives in Memphis. And then we'll have one that says Marcus lives in Chicago. And then maybe we have Jackie and Marcus met in Chicago. Okay, so we have three documents. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is actually label our documents. So we're gonna have document IDs for each of them, one, two, and three. So over here, we'll think of this as our doc IDs. And then on the right here, of course, we have our actual documents. Now we need to figure out how to get our raw text here into something called a term document instance matrix so that we can support Boolean retrieval search. And so the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to tokenize our documents. And by that, what I mean is we think of all of the terms in our documents as separate. And so we kind of make this array-like structure or list of tokens from each of our documents. And you'll hear me refer to tokens or terms. Think of those things uh, interchangeably. And for this example, we can think of the terms as words, but that actually falls apart pretty quickly in natural language. We have to keep into consideration uh, terms like New York, for instance, which of course contains two words, New and York, but is of course a single concept, a single term. And so uh, quite often we wouldn't, when we tokenize, we wouldn't want to separate New and York out if we were considering New York itself as a single term. So that's just something to keep in mind. A few other terms that come up here, we talk about the collection of documents here often as a corpus. And multiple corpuses are usually called corpora. Well, corpuses, corpora is just the plural of corpus. And so we have one corpora that contains three documents, and then each of them contain a different number of tokens. So let's go ahead and construct our term document incidence matrix for this particular corpus. And so the way that we're gonna do this is along the vertical axis, we're going to put all of the unique tokens that occur in our corpus. So now we're on Marcus, but we already have lives. We already have in, so we just need Chicago. And then we have Jackie and Marcus, we need and. And then we have Met in Chicago, we have everything except Met, so we need to put Met here. Okay, so this is the vertical axis of our term document instance matrix. And then along the horizontal axis, we just put the doc IDs. So we have one, two, and three. Okay, so now we just need to, as we fill out our matrix, put a zero or one for each sort of cell here, if you will depending on whether or not a particular term occurs in a document. 
So if we're looking at Jackie, Jackie occurs in the first and the third document, but not in the second. So we do one for the first, zero for the second, one for the third. And then lives, we have the first and second document. In is in all three documents. And we just work our way down. So the resulting structure we have here is in fact our term document incidence matrix. And what's nice about this is we can use this data structure now to do our Boolean retrieval. So let's say that we want to search for documents that contain the terms Jackie and Memphis. So we want to support a query of the form Jackie and Memphis. So what we do is we take the vector for Jackie, which is 101, and then we take the vector for Memphis, which is 100. And then we just do a bitwise AND on these two vectors. And of course, we get 100. And the resulting vector is, of course, all the documents in which Jackie and Memphis occur together. So Jackie occurs in documents 1 and 3. So 1 and 3. Memphis only occurs in document 1. And so when we take the bitwise AND of 101 and 100, we get 100 out. And it's correct that it's just the first document. Likewise, if we want to do like an OR query, for instance, let's say we want to satisfy the query Jackie or Marcus, then we have the vector for Jackie, which is 101. And then the vector for Marcus is 011. And then if we're going to do a bitwise OR operation here between these two vectors, then of course we have 1, 1, 1. And so the resulting vector is all of the documents. So uh, we're just looking at sort of each index of a document in our list of document IDs here. So Jackie occurs in the first, so that's satisfied. Marcus occurs in the second, that's satisfied. And both, of course, occur in the third. And so that is satisfied. So you can see how relatively simple it is to construct these uh, Boolean retrieval queries once we have indexed our data into this term document incidence matrix structure. But this structure does have some limitations. So let's think about how this structure would grow over time, for instance. Well, we know that we're going to have as many columns in our matrix as our documents in our corpora. And we're going to have as many rows in our matrix as we do unique terms in our lexicon. That's another word that's often used here. It means the same thing that it does in English, but just think of this as the set of unique words or unique terms, I should say. So we're going to have really a pretty big data structure and it's going to be incredibly sparse. It's actually going to contain mostly zeros. And we can do some back the envelope calculations here to see, first of all, approximately how big a collection of documents might be depending on the size of each document and the number of records. And we can also do back the envelope calculations to see approximately how large a term document incidence matrix would be as well. So let's do that really quickly. So let's imagine that for a word like Jackie, which is maybe about average length for an English word, we're talking about six characters long and six bytes total when using UTF-8. So this is just kind of a ballpark estimate that we're dealing with about six bytes per word. And typically in English, if we're thinking about words in a book, for instance, there are usually between 250 or 300 words per page. So let's just say 250 words per page. And let's consider page as maybe the size of our documents. So we have about 250 words per document that we're indexing in this example. And now let's say we want to index a million pages of data. So 6 times 250 is 1,500. So 1,500 times 10 to the 6 is the same as saying 1.5 times 10 to the 9 bytes. 10 to the 9 is gigabytes. So we're talking about approximately 1.5 gigabytes to store a million pages of documents when we have approximately six bytes per word and about 250 or so uh, words per document. 
So we're in the ballpark of 1.5 gigs to store that data. And then if we are thinking about indexing that data in a term document incidence matrix, we should think about the overall size of the index itself. So this is storage for data. And then in terms of storage for the index, specifically the term document matrix, we're looking at a pretty large size because if we're thinking that there are a million pages, that's a million documents, so our matrix has a million columns, and the number of rows is going to be the size of our lexicon. If we're talking about typical English natural language, then it totally depends on the context, of course, but we're talking anywhere between 200 and 400,000 uh, unique words in our lexicon. So let's just say that we're talking about approximately 300,000. So this would be 3 times 10 to the 5th by 10 to the 6th in terms of the shape of our matrix. And so here we're talking approximately 3 times 10 to the 11th bits if we can just imagine that we can store all of the zeros or ones as bits. And often here I think it helps to remember to write out the conversions here. So when we're talking about kilobytes, it is uh, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 6 for megabytes, 10 to the 9 for gigabytes. So we have 3 times 10 to the 11 bits. 11 minus 9 is 2, so we have something like 3 times 10 to the 2 gigabytes. In other words, something like 30, a little bit more than 30 gigabytes just to store the zeros and ones in our term document matrix for only 1.5 gigs of data. Now this is all back the envelope calculation. These numbers could vary you know, considerably, but just is just to give you an idea of the size of a term doc document matrix um, given just a, a little over a gig of data that we need to search. The other really important thing to note here about the efficiency is we're considering that there are only 250 words possible per individual document, but our lexicon is like approximately a thousand times as big as the number of words per document. So what this means is that our term document matrix is going to be really sparse for a collection of any size. Um, and by sparse, I mean that a vast majority of the values in this matrix are going to be zero. So if you think about it, we have a total of 250 words per document and a million documents. So total, we have 250 million possible ones, but the approximate size of our entire term document matrix is three times 10 to the 11, which consists of all possible values. So 250 divided by 3 is something like 83 times 10 to the minus 5 percent. Well, actually, 10 to the minus 5 times uh, 100. So 10 to the minus 3 percent. So that is literally 0.08 three percent possible like maximum number of ones that we can have in a corpus this size with document size of 250 terms per document so that's just how sparse this term document matrix is going to be at maximum uh, it's going to be 0.083 percent possible ones or it's going to be 99.9 percent uh, zeros so that's going to be a major drawback that leads us to another type of uh, index that we'll make great use of called an inverted index. But first I want to look at how we can actually implement a term document instance matrix in Python in a Jupyter Notebook. So here we're going to look at constructing a term document instance matrix in Python in a Jupyter Notebook. 
and we'll look at how we can just use a simple process to construct that and then also compute uh, the bitwise operations that are required for that Boolean retrieval model of search. So in this case, we'll also have three documents. We take, I took these from reviews for a particular soccer ball. And so we have three reviews. The glider two is a great soccer ball. What a bad soccer ball. And I'm happy with the glider. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a Python list of these docs. And so we can see that here. Now already from an NLP perspective, we can see some things that are gonna be kind of tricky. So for instance, let's go ahead and get these unique terms. And I'm just gonna use set comprehension here in Python to get those terms. And one of the things that we notice here are, well, a few things. One, we have, if you see like this glider two is supposed to be the Roman numeral two, but we also have the word I. And so if we're just looking at the lexicon here with no context, we actually have no way of knowing whether this is the Roman numeral one or the word I. So that's something to keep in mind. We also have a little bit of duplication in the sense that we've done no other pre-processing to the tokens that we pulled out. And so we have different capitalization for glider. So glider appears twice in our lexicon, even though it's probably representing the same term. All right, so what we'll do with that noted is just construct our term document matrix, and we're gonna use a Python dictionary as the structure for holding this just for the ease of interpretability. So we're gonna create a new document term matrix or term document matrix, I should say here as a dictionary. And then for each term in our lexicon, our unique terms, we're going to put an index for that particular term and just instantiate it as an empty list. And then for each of our documents, if the term is in the document, then we're just going to append one, otherwise we're gonna append a zero. And then we can see that term document matrix get constructed here. Now that we have our term document matrix constructed, the query to find all documents, in this case containing glider and soccer, for instance, is just a bitwise and operation. So to construct the array, I'm gonna use numpy, um, and we're just going to simply use the np array data type here to uh, wrap docs. So we have a, a vector, if you will, a numpy array here, rather than a Python list. So our vector one is just the numpy array of those list of zeros or ones at the term glider. So we'll get this array of zero, zero, one. And then we'll do the same for soccer. So we have the vector one, one, zero. And then if we just use the bitwise and operator provided in Python, we can just and those two operations together. And here we get the result that we expect and just we're printing, uh, printing out a line here just to make it a little bit more clear visually. So now we can just get the matching documents from our corpus, again, using some list comprehension here. And all I'm doing is using element-wise multiplication here. So we're taking this vector that we get out and I'm doing element-wise multiplication against our corpus, so doc for doc in our vector times our docs array if there is a document present. Otherwise, we'd get like an empty string here if I, if I didn't specify if a document. So we're just ignoring the empty strings. So that's the document we get out. So it's our, our simple combination of using some list comprehension here along with this Boolean algebra that we have in, uh, in Python. And then just to demonstrate another one here, this time we're just getting the intersection of documents containing A and documents containing ball. And so we can see that here. And so we get those two documents out and just for the sake of doing it, you can see that we can also do or queries here as well. And the search is the same, just doing that element-wise multiplication on the vectors. Okay, in the next video, we're gonna talk about a way that we can sort of overcome the problems of space that we run into if we were to construct a really big uh, term document 
incidence matrix where we can see that most of the storage space that we're paying for is like over 99% zero. Um, and the way that we get around that is uh, sort of a concept that's central to information retrieval, which is the inverted index. And so we'll look at that in the next video.